Alright then folks, let's start digging through the first edition Pathfinder Druid's class abilities. Hello everyone, and welcome back down here to the Gamer's Den with me, your host, Jordan, your master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire, here to start talking to you today about some of the first edition Pathfinder Druid's class abilities. Not that there's like a huge bunch or a wide swathe of abilities to pick through and go over the nitty gritty details, it's just one of their most important abilities has a fair bit to it that's just going to take a little bit more time than what I had to work with, so we're going to break things up into two separate episodes. But before we get into everything that we do have for you today if you're new here to the channel go on down there hit the subscribe button and become a regular member here at the gamers den or if you've already gone on ahead and listed yourself on such an incredible roster of legendary heroes then go on down to hit the like button and share the video far and wide but now we'll actually start breaking things down here for you and to begin things druids get a d8 for their hit points not as much as you know fighters paladins barbarians but you're going to be on par with rogues and clerics in that regard in a similar manner you have that two-thirds base attack bonus progression which puts you in that rogue and cleric company there and it's not bad at all given your ability to wild shape and the numerous spells that you have at your beck and call you're going to be able to help compensate for some of that pretty reliably on top of being able to just wreak all kinds of havoc elsewhere on the battlefield you're also coming into this with good fortitude and will saves but you're gonna have poor reflex saves that'll be a weak point for you for some time to come and again spell casting does help mitigate that but it's still something to be aware of you do get medium and light armor proficiency as well as shield proficiencies but you are restricted from using metallic versions or metallic medium armors or light armors the only way to say wear a breastplate is if it were made out of ironwood or some other equivalent uh quote unquote natural material those things would be allowable but talk with your dm first and see what kind of flexibilities you have there otherwise though you're going to be skipping out on metal armor although interestingly your weapon proficiencies are club dagger dart quarterstaff scimitar scythe sickle short spear sling and spear and it's interesting there that you know the tenants and the kind of natural spirit magic kind of things that the druids typically channel and utilize through their connection to nature uh, forbids them from wearing metallic armors but weapons like scimitars and the scimitar and uh, sides or sickles spears daggers those are fine that's always been an interesting point to me although again if you're going to pick out anything from that list i'd recommend either a scimitar or a spear scimitar is going to have a good critical threat range whereas a spear is going to get you some pretty good reach and also i would say a spear is fairly iconic looking for a druid to have but that's my take you're also going to get four skill ranks plus your intelligence bonus per level and you start off learning or knowing how to speak druidic for free i believe sylvan is one of the other bonus languages in there overall not bad and as mentioned earlier you get full spell casting progression and you also get to spontaneously cast summon nature's ally is that as good as summon monster no but it's still a summoning spell that will allow you to support your allies create flanking opportunities and possibly get enemy attacks directed towards the summoned creatures rather than you or any of your allies so definitely something handy to have and i think it gets a bit underrated when in compare when compared to summon monster that's nothing that the druid can help there overall they they don't get summon monsters but they do have a summon nature's ally spell which puts more units on the battlefield on your side affecting the action economy all of that fun jazz that we've covered before now for the actual class abilities you start off at level one getting nature bond choose either a cleric domain air animal or the animal subdomain that i would recommend would be feather earth fire uh, plant water or weather now fire is not super great just because so many creatures have either fire resistance or outright fire immunity so that's going to kind of from a mechanical standpoint really hamper you but 
the ash subdomain definitely has some interesting options underneath of it that make it pretty worthwhile and the subdomains are open to you so that's definitely something to dig into the other choice would be an animal companion which we're going to lean with for this build or another option is druidic herbalism Works like the Brew Potion feat, but for Druid spells, and is usable a number of times a day equal to your Wisdom modifier. By 7th level, the concoctions work like Alchemist Extracts, cost spell slots, and cost nothing to create financially. Overall, Druidic Herbalism's pretty damn cool. It's definitely a unique and interesting idea. Might be something we come back into and revisit later on. Overall, overall, though, all three of these options are going to be good, effective options for you. The Animal Companion is another person on the battlefield on your side that moves and goes on your turn. Druidic Herbalism just adds a lot of functionality and utility for you, and also Brew Potion feat that's fantastic. And then, of course, the Cleric Domains are just great for the abilities that they offer for you. Now. Uh, all of those things though you just kind of have to mix and match and think about the kind of character you're building and this is the moment here where I'm going to remind everyone that this guide is just that it's just a guide this is nothing set in stone that you have to follow down to the last specific detail make the characters that you want to make just use this guide as like a reference point the goal here is to put together effective characters but I'm not trying to lean too hard into building something broken necessarily something effective fun useful but not overly broken or at least not as overly broken as you can take a full spell casting class so if something fit just fits overall even though i don't like fire from a mechanical standpoint it is still uh, something that you can select for your character if that's appropriate because forest fires are a natural part of nature and the like so it, it is fitting thematic and appropriate so go with that if that fits for your character now with that out of the way let's keep things going here also at level one you get nature sense which gives you a plus two bonus on knowledge nature and survival knowledge nature is essential for you to have and survival well what kind of a druid are you if you don't have survival on hand but the thing is is that survival is while it is useful and certainly it fits together with brew potion because you're gathering different herbs and materials together and mixing them and creating these druidic potions essentially you're you still have spell casting you have spell casting available to you so survival it Bits, I might be giving it a little bit more credit than I should, but overall, not bad. And the fact that you're getting a plus two bonus to two separate skills keeps this from being just kind of okay. This is actually good, and it's into skills that are either fitting or mechanically effective for you to have. So definitely good. The next option, though, is one that is thematic, or I shouldn't say option. The next class ability that you do get is thematic it's appropriate it fits with the feel of a druid but it's not all that great especially not with the kind of build we're going for and that's wild empathy coming in at level one you can influence an animal's attitude adding your druid level charisma modifier and make a d20 roll uh to well try to improve the attitude of an animal like if you were doing diplomacy with it this is usable on magic beasts with an intelligence of one to two but you take a minus four penalty on that check so you can see the problem here we are using charisma as our dump stat so you're taking a penalty and that is going to affect your role overall now your penalty can't be your penalty can't take it down past uh past zero but early on you're not going to be great at adjusting animals attitudes and at later levels you have so many means of mitigating any issues you may have with uh creatures that are under that animal template that or if you can't mitigate them you can deal with them effectively you and your party will be able to just completely brush aside most of the different animal kind of creatures so yeah, this skill, this ability doesn't really do much for you. So this is one that's just kind of kind of a dud for you. 
At level 2, we get Woodland Stride. You move through natural, overgrown terrain without impediment. So that's thorn bushes, shrubs, etc. Any kind of overgrowth like that. Magically altered plant life will have their normal effects, however. So this is a great way for you to lose pursuers, but it's only outdoors in a natural environment, which, hey, a lot of adventures do take place in the great outdoors, but... You know, this is somewhat limited in its usefulness and is kind of dependent on if your DM is going to lean into it and allow this to be effective for you, or if it just gets forgotten about or circumnavigated somehow, or if it's just in an area where it's not applicable. If you're in an open field, I mean, not much you can do there. So keep that in mind. At level 3, we have another ability that's okay, it's Trackless Step. Only leave a trail in natural terrain if you so choose to be tracked. Now, it's cool, it's thematic, it's on point, it fits with everything overall, but there are magical means of tracking you. Anybody that's out in the woods is at a disadvantage with you anyways, and you know, it, it's cool. I like it. I don't think it's as bad as a lot of people say. A lot of people describe this as being uh, situational. Not really all that it's something that you forget about, and maybe that's sort of true, but I still like it overall. It's great to have it. It's there in your back pocket if you somehow ever need it, but yeah, it's nothing to write home about either. Unlike nature or resist nature's lure, coming in at level 4. Gain a plus 4 save bonus versus spell like and supernatural abilities of the Fae. In addition to spells and spell like effects that target plants such as Blight, Entangle, Spike Growth, and Warp Wood. Now, that's great overall there. Spells like Entangle and Spike Growth are definitely something you're more likely to come across, especially if you're fighting other druids. But that is specifically relegated to druids or people that have access to the druidic spell list. And fey creatures, they are dangerous, and it's good to have this bonus against their, their spell-like and supernatural abilities. But again, that's a very specific focus. However, as a druid, in more natural environs and the like, you are probably going to be just a little bit more likely to encounter those. And again, this, the usefulness of this just depends on how much your DM is leaning into your class abilities and allowing your different class abilities to be useful. So there is a little bit of that there. But if you are dealing with Fae, then this is absolutely golden for you. This is much, much more effective in that instance. But of course there are still more class abilities yet to come. We still have to talk about the uh, wild shape and then move into uh, timeless body, a thousand faces, things like that, and things that we will be discussing on Saturday's episode. But what do you think? Go on down to the comments below and let me know your thoughts. Did you like today's video? Did you dislike it? Let me know. Either way, hit those like or dislike buttons and we'll engage in discussion down in the comments below. And remember that if you're new here to the channel, go on down there, hit the subscribe button, and become a regular member here at the Gamer's Den. But with all that said, I've been your host, Jordan, your master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire. Thank you all so very much for your time, and you folks all have yourselves a good night.